All right, all right, all right. What's going on with everybody? All right, happy Sabbath. We're about to get started in a second, shortly. Give me a second to uh, give everybody a notification. I'm a little late with the notifications and stuff, okay? All right, all right. <laughs> let, me, let me mute that in the background. Make sure you guys invite as many people as you possibly can. All right, put a hashtag Shalom in the chat and share this, share this. This is the Sabbath class. Let me open this up and let everybody know. Ring the dinner bell, so to speak. Okay, so today's, the title of today's Sabbath class is in just one hour. Three S sales effortlessly. So I'm going to introduce you to the greatest salesman of all time, ancient or current, okay, or future. I'm going to introduce you to the greatest salesperson of all time. And I promise you, nobody has taught you about this before, okay? So this is one of those classes you're not going to want to leave out early, okay? So just give me a second to get everybody on here, and we'll be getting started. You can get you something to drink. Um, can't pop no popcorn because you can't kindle the fire, right? Let me see. Click to join this live. All right. So I'm inviting everybody right now. Let me see. Join the Sabbath class here now. Okay. So you can share this to your Facebook page. It will allow more people to discover this class as well. I'm about to introduce you to something we call the Venus flytrap method. Okay, and it will help you effortlessly skyrocket your sales. We've been doing this for years. This method was actually brought to my attention right along with the uh, trapdoor spider method. My wife, she helped me come up with this method right here, guys. Okay, and it's so genius, especially when I actually found out the number one salesperson of all time was using this exact method, and it is not Grant Cardone. It is not Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort. It is not, uh, who else is a great seller? It's none of these guys. All right, put, a, put, put your guess in the chat of who you think the greatest salesperson of all time is. Put your guess in the chat. Who do you think the greatest salesperson of all time is? <laughs> Come on, man. Give me some class participation. Yes, what's up, self-made? What's up, self-made? He said, get them likes up in my Kevin Samuels voice. <laughs> hey, he always here, man. That's dedication. I appreciate that, broski. This is a Sabbath class we don't want to miss. Now, I understand, guys, on your time, if you're East Coast, if you're in the United States, time has like changed from the, uh, what do you call it, daylight savings time. But where I'm at in Panama, they don't have, they don't do that crap uh, that is done in the United States with the daylight savings time. So for me, it's still 11 o'clock. So some of you guys, it, it might be like 10 or the time has went back or something. You're like, dude, he's supposed to be going live in one more hour. Why is he so early? Well, it's 11 where I'm at. You understand? I can't really control that the government there like to do crazy stuff. Anyway, I ain't going to go too hard with it. Uh, okay, let me go ahead. I'm trying to send out the invite, y'all. So give me a second. All right. This class is live and will 3x your sales effort list. Early. Don't miss it. Okay. So I'm happy for those of you who are here. I don't expect it to be some big turnout because, like I said, for some of y'all, I'm an hour early. And for some of y'all, like, I'm super, super early or whatever. <laughs> so you're like, yo, why is the dude even live right now? Well, it's 11 my time. So we're going to have to figure out some type of adjustments or something, right? 
Uh, but it's all right. It doesn't have to be a million people on here. If they have to catch the replay or something like that, pond the replay like Rihanna, we can do that. But it is the Sabbath day, so I want us all to be able to get back to rest eventually. Um, but I wanted to get this class out here for you guys, because remember, I always give you biblical business principles straight from the scripture that applies to right now for your businesses and your lives, right? So I just want you guys to understand that the greatest salesperson of all time, I didn't get to see you guys' guesses. Okay, so Polygame says, happy Sabbath, Dia de Reposo. I'm live in the land of Israel, Panama, Choco, to Venezuela, to Colombia, to Chile, the real land of Israel. Okay. Yeah, well, I ain't, you know. All right, well, salute to you. Happy Sabbath. I appreciate you joining from wherever you are, right? Okay. So now, give me one more minute, and we will get started with the class. La clase. Like pun say, you ain't even in me clase. All right, give me one more minute, y'all. And we will be beginning. We will be beginning like Genesis. That's bars right there. So open this up in another tab, share this to your Facebook so you can watch the replay and you won't forget about it because if it just stays on my channel, then you'll forget to come back and watch the replay. Okay, so I want you to Open up another browser and share it to your Facebook because if it's on your timeline and pinned to your dang on Facebook profile, you will not forget to come back and watch it. OK, I want you guys to come back and watch this, not for views sake, but for gems sake. OK, laws sake. We're going to drop some gems up in this mug. That's going to be crazy. Watch this. OK, let me. <sighs> this. Almost done, y'all. This live stream will 3x as effortlessly. Now, all right. So I hope you guys, the Sabbath day is going great so far, because mine's is. I know that that is the truth. Hey, congratulations, y'all. We have got the um, Facebook group to about 3,000 people now. That's where it's at. Okay, let me get to the channel. And then we will begin. Okay, so I sent it to as many people as I could. I ain't got time to be sending invites all day. All right. I told y'all to share me with that, you know, help me with that. And you can share it. Right. And we could get a little bit more people on here to help them with this. But we good with this this amount right now. And the rest of the people will just see the replay. OK. Happy Sabbath, DeWine. What's going on? What's going on? OK. All right. There we go. All right. So remember, as always, if you're a woman, you understand you want to have your head covered. If you are a man, uncover your head. Just do, do not dishonor your head. Um, also, you want to read along. You never want to be led astray by anybody. Not saying that's what I'm going to do, but I just want you guys to be able to speak with the most high yourself and receive revelation from him directly. Um, you know, because you he might reveal to you something more that you can share with me. OK, so I asked you guys at the beginning of this, who do you think the greatest salesperson of all time is? And I still don't have any uh, opinions in the chat. Maybe you guys don't have an opinion. Maybe you don't know. But I am going to tell you that the greatest salesperson of all time is not Grant Cardone. It is not the Wolf of Wall Street, uh, Jeff, uh, Jordan Belfort, the greatest salesperson of all time is Yahawashai. Yahawashai, or the world, some parts, they call him Jesus, right? Christ, right? So he is the greatest salesperson of all time. How can I prove it? Oh, man. Well, I mean, he did 
create a movement almost 4,000 years ago that is still here right now? What other salesperson have you done, uh, have done something like that, have accomplished that? Uh, what other salesperson do you know have influenced the lives of millions of or billions of people that they never even met? They're not even from the same generation. So the biblical business principles I'm going to bring to you today, straight from the scripture, are ways that you will be able to apply to your, your business, your lives, period, and become a top salesperson. You understand what I'm saying? And it will become effortless. Remember, I told you, is positioning, then is leveraging others, positioning yourself, then leveraging others to profit recycle. Watch what I show you out of the scriptures and tell me that he is not the king, okay? Now, what is a Venus flytrap? Let's get the Google definition. <laughs> Venus flytrap. And how does this pertain to Christ or Yahweh? And how does this pertain to sales? Watch this, Venus flytrap definition. All right. A Venus flytrap, a small carnivorous bog plant with hinged leaves that spring shut on and digest insects which land on them, okay? Native to Southeastern United States, okay? They spring shut, they spring shut and digest insects which land on them. This is a carnivorous plant. If you see a lion coming, guys, which is weird because he's also the lion of Judah too, but watch this. If you see a lion coming, you don't have to wait for that lion to spring at you for you to know he's a predator, a carnivorous predator. You see a cheetah, hyena, any of these other predators, but when these insects land on this plant, it seems as if it's just it's just the plant, right? Perfect, like, it's perfect. So how do you make it to where your business is similar to a Venus flytrap? Yahawashai did this. Christ did this. You know how people are so uh, uh, turned off by Jehovah Witnesses nowadays. Christ wasn't like that. Jehovah Witnesses, they represent like, no offense to any Jehovah Witnesses that might be on here, but whatever. Uh, Jehovah Witnesses would represent a car salesman, like super aggressive, super in your face, super Grant Cardone-ish. You understand? You can see the sale coming like a, a freaking, like, like a mile away. You don't want to be the car salesman. You don't want to be the Jehovah Witness if you're trying to persuade or sell to somebody or get someone to join you to become your disciples or your customers. Trying to put it in nowadays terms and mix it with the back then terms. You understand? So he told us to go out and make disciples in many nations of all nations. That takes some type of sales skills. You understand what I'm saying? So how do you do that effortlessly? Do you understand everywhere Yahawashai went, it was a trail, an army of people following behind him, wanting to join him, wanting to be healed by him. How do you make it to where your business is like that, where you're, you don't have to be all salesy? People are just fiending on some Jodeci stuff for your business, your product or your service. Well, it's easy. Yeah, how wish I use a Venus flytrap method? That's what me and my wife came up with the name, right? It didn't look like he was trying to recruit people. He was one of the people, even though he was more powerful than the people. And these scriptures we're going to go over today are going to show you how to convert to being Christ-like. To where when you're trying to sell something or persuade somebody or hire somebody, you don't have to be so forceful and aggressive. You will be infectious where people just want to be a part of your movement. Nobody had, Christ didn't beg anybody to follow him. How he was positioned, they just wanted to be a part. They desired, they were desperate to be a part of his movement. How do you do that with your sales? Okay, what's up, Moski? How you doing? 
Uh, Polygame said he creates a universe that we all take part in on various spheres. Yes, right? Okay, so the Venus flytrap method. Some of you guys might have seen a video before and, and they made movies about it. Y'all remember Little Shop of Horrors? Feed Me Seymour, the giant plant that opened up and was eating people and stuff like that. That's lit. It looks like it's just a plant. It looks innocent. The unsuspected stranger, like Walker said, right? <laughs> but once you land on that plant, once that insect land on that plant, they're, they're taken. It's just like with Yahweh Shai. Once you've been taken by the spirit of Christ or Yahweh Shai, it's the greatest feeling ever. And you don't, you can't get away from it. This is why when a lot of people fall out of the spirit, they like commit suicide or turn to drugs and stuff because they can never find that feeling again. So how do you make it to where your sales, your company is so infectious to where like they have, it has the spirit around it where people just have to be a part of it. Now we're going to go to the scripture. Now that you guys understand that Yahweh is the greatest salesperson of all time, I'm going to prove it. Okay. Now that you know the definition of a Venus flytrap, I'm going to prove to you that he was using the Venus flytrap. Watch this. Ooh, this is so fun. I pray that you guys are taking notes. It's 12 people on here. Let's get these likes up. Use this Venus flytrap method. Use this Venus flytrap method for everything that you're trying to do. This is what Christ did. Watch this. Come on, man. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Okay. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. Okay, we're going we're gonna to hear it straight from your house, Shai. Uh, DeWine said, this is what I've been waiting to know. All praises to the Most High. All praises. Spirit bears witness. We on the same track today. We both want to know how can this one man come in the flesh and influence generations forever. Your kids, 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 his name is going to be forever. And when the world passes away, his name is, how do you become a salesperson or a brand or a company or, or a role model or whatever it is like that? He leaves the blueprints. Remember, you're supposed to follow the footsteps in the sand. We're not supposed to be reinventing the wheel or making our own footsteps. You follow the one that came and did it perfect for everything that you do in life, business, relationships, all of that. Watch this. 19. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all. Do you guys understand that? This man could snap his fingers and do away with the entire planet. But when he came here, he became servant to us. He was a king. But what we don't realize in this generation, we see all the stupid uh, uh, um, Game of Thrones movies and stuff. The king is supposed to be the greatest servant to the people which is why King Solomon asked for wisdom instead of gold. Because he understood, I need wisdom to be the greatest servant to my people so that they're not following a tyrant. So Yahweh came here and became the greatest servant, even though he was more powerful than everybody. See, how do you go for your company? See, we get businesses, become entrepreneurs, and then we want to sit on the throne and think we're above everybody. He said, for though I be free from all men, even though I'm, I'm up there, you know, chilling the right hand of the most high God, I helped him build all things. Even though that when I came here in the flesh through a woman, I made myself humble. I lowered myself. I humbled myself. So how do you become that in your company? OK, so he said, yet have I made myself servant unto all. We are always thinking about collecting the payments, how we're going to upsell and all of that stuff. No, flip that around and have customer convenience obsession. How do you obsess over becoming the best servant you can 
for your customers. That's how you create that word of mouth effect that exceeds generations. He didn't think about the payment, guys. Why? Because his payment didn't come from people. His payment came from the guy, from the Most High. He received his crown from the Most High. When he came here to serve us and to die for us, God made him the promise of payment. God said that, yo, you do this, you're going to rule for a thousand years. You're going to have the kingdom once this kingdom passes away. That was a good deal, wasn't it? So God uh, so. <laughs> Was a salesman too, right? Like he was like, yo, Christ, you're gonna be ruler of all, king of all kings. Go die for him. So he came here without no see, pay attention, pay attention, without any hopes of reciprocity. Oh, I just said something that was sinful to any regular salesperson because all we're thinking about is what a person can do for us and put in our pockets. He became a servant without any hope for reciprocity, meaning he didn't want anybody to do it. Nobody could do anything for him because what does he need from this world when he's from, the, from heaven? And then he knows that heaven is going to come here. So what could this world offer him? So when he came here, he legitimately, genuinely wanted to help save, heal, and serve. How do you fix your spirit and your mind to where you genuinely want to do that for people with your offer, your business, your company, your brand? See, we have to cleanse ourselves. Because right now we're thinking, man, my bank account kind of low. What can I sell to these fools? That's what we think. You're supposed to be Christ-like. He didn't think like that. So if you want his results, you have to think like him. We love saying Christians. Christians are Christ-like. But business in this world is done with wickedness, covetousness, and evil. Ulterior motives and all of this extra stuff. What is that, the cat? Get what you're getting and do it quietly, please. All right, so check this out. It says, for though I be free of all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I may gain the more. I don't think y'all seeing this. Why did he do it? So he can get a pat on the back? So he can get some stupid humanitarian award? No. It said that I might gain the more. He understood that he had to be relatable to the people that he was trying to sell to. You can't be above them. They can't relate to that. And I noticed that when we'll create videos talking about how a person can make their first million dollars, is never as popular as the videos when you're teaching somebody how they can make their first hundred dollars. And the reason is, it's not relatable to majority of people. So he said, I made myself servant unto all so that I can gain the more, the majority. The majority of people don't have any experience with being a God like him or none of them pretty much. So he understood in order to appeal to the masses, even though it's some kings and stuff out here, even though it was Pharisees that knew all the law and all of that, he understood if I want to gain the masses, I got to look like the masses. So if your business, company, brand, person, whatever it is, wants to gain the masses of customers, you have to be relatable to the masses. You see, I told you guys, everything is in the scriptures. All of it, business, relationships, spiritual, all of that is in here. This is the best book of all time. I don't care what business book these channels is trying to recommend to you. They're not going to teach you this. So it says he became servant to all so that he can gain the more. Watch this. And until the Jews, I became a Jew. <laughs> you see this? Until the Jews. I mean, I need y'all to pay attention to this. I am whatever you say I am, pretty much, right? It's formulas to this. 
and unto the Jews, I became a Jew that I might gain the Jews. See, we have all these divisions nowadays when the scripture says that there should be no divisions. We call them niche, niche. We call them niches and all of this type of stuff, right? Or we call them religions and cults and all of that. But he is like, "Lo, yo, you a Jew? I'm a Jew too. <laughs> he said, I became a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. So when he was around the Jews, he kept the commandments better than the Jews. Like he was doing the law too, right? Watch this. To them that are with all law as without law. So he would also go around the sinners because he can't be tempted. So be careful, guys. We are not like Christ in the way that we can't be tempted in the flesh. He's, his strength is above ours. So that's why he tells us to watch our time. Don't go around sinners if it's going to tempt you. I know we want to go and help and stuff, but don't go to a strip club if you have lust problems. That don't make any sense. Don't go to a casino to witness to people if you got a gambling problem. That don't make any sense, right? So what, what he did was he became what you needed at that time. So it said, to the weak became I as weak. What does that mean? He could have obliterated those dang on soldiers and all those people that put him up on the cross. But he knew that that wouldn't be relatable. It wouldn't, the people wouldn't feel that he understood the struggle that they were going through every day if he just came and did all this. You, you understand what I'm saying? Hop down here looking like Thor or somebody like that. They, it, he wouldn't have gained the people. So he to, to the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men that I might be uh, by all means save some. Oof, man. Listen, man. I'm just telling y'all, it ain't nothing out here like this, man. <laughs> Bite size learn to say my man with the bars. Hey, hashtag bars. Look, the Bible got bars, man. Like this is, these are the bars right here. Thanks, thanks, uh, heck yeah, for putting in the scriptures in here. Yeah, Goat Logic says facts. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Let's let's move on, right? Let's move on. But that, it's kind of hard to move on to that, man, because that's a punchline right there, man. It's kind of difficult, but we're going to get a precept for that. Mm, excuse me. We're going to get a precept for that. Watch this, y'all. Like, it ain't no game out here, man. Watch this. So go to Philippians. Everybody that has a Bible or a Bible app right now, fungal right now, go to Philippians. Okay, Philippians chapter two. Philippians chapter two. And we're going to start at, uh, let's just, let me look at this. Uh, we're going to gain blah, 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 blah. Okay. But made himself. Hold on, y'all. Give me one moment. Un momento. Philippians chapter two. Verse five. Mm. Woo -wee! Philippians chapter two, verse five. And we're going to read that on down. OK, it says, let this mind be in you. <laughs> Come on, y'all. It says, let this mind be in you, meaning the same way he thought you need to think. Inherit his thinking, brain transplant, okay? So you understand. Let this mind be in you, this way of thinking, which was also in Yahushai or Christ, who now is describing Christ, is, is, describe, is describing him, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Watch this. So even though, 
he has like power unimaginable. Watch what seven says, verse seven, but made himself of no reputation. Do you know he could have, it's kind of hard for a Negro to do, uh, not to do that, man. You get a little clout, you get you a little power, the whole world got to know about it. You got to go viral. Everybody got to know your name. Like it's a Cheers uh, TV show or something like that, right? <laughs> like everybody got to know. It says, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Oh, we're hearing that word again, a servant. Come on. So how are you going to become the best salesperson in the world? You need to become the best servant in the world because then you camouflage with the rest of the ones that you're trying to serve. How can you, check this out. In order to know their pain points, you got to go through it. Why do you think they created that show fit, fit the fat, the fit? They created that show fit the fat, the fit because the personal trainers, they couldn't sympathize or empathize with their clients. They're like, get your fat butt up, man. You don't want to work out, blah, blah, blah. They didn't understand. They haven't been that fat in a long time. So they got fat again and then had to lose all that weight. And they saw how hard it was, which, what made, which is what made them into the best personal trainers in the world now. This is a formula. I keep trying to tell you that. And then watch this. Let me prove it again. What is it called? Undercover billionaire takes these billionaires, throws them in a hood with a hundred bucks and maybe a little vehicle. And they got to figure out how to come back up again. And they realize, cause they've been rich for so long that they lost track with the struggle. See, Christ knew all this. He already know. God and Christ already know this stuff. Like, yo, these, I ain't gonna be able to win these people over if I come down here, I am the son of the living God and you must bow. I'm going to save you one day. I am better than you. If he came through talking like that, he wouldn't have won nobody. And I, I gave y'all the example of when we, like when you see the dang on gurus with the private jets and all of that stuff, you can't relate to them videos. It's fun to look at the cars and all of that stuff, but you're like, yo, I can't even make $50 online. Like what I'm gonna do with this? He understood that. It said he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Come on, golly. A lot of people are like, yo, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't like us. Yes, he was. He was born through the vaginal area, just like you were. He had a mother, a fleshly mother, and a father just like you did. If he did it any other way, then he wouldn't be in the likeness of men, would he? He would have a reputation. He would be able to say he's above if he did it any other way. He would not be able to relate to us. So it had to be just like you was born. So that he can be an example. See, I was born in the flesh. I was able to overcome sin. What's your excuse? See, we can't say, oh, well, since you Christ, it was easy for you. No, he was he, same flesh, same puberty down there, if you get what I'm talking about. Same uh, whore houses on the block and all of that stuff. But he was able to overcome all of that. Just so he can show us we can do it, too. So guess what? If he can be the greatest salesperson of all time by being the greatest servant first of all time, then you can too. So check this out. It says eight. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Come on, y'all. He's the king of kings. He humbled himself. He didn't throw, push his weight around. You know how many subscribers I got? Cause you know how many? Cause you know how many disciples I got. Cause <laughs> you know how many people want me to come over there and heal them. Cause you know what I'm saying he went on that. He he made himself like a man, and he humbled himself. And guess what? Just like a man, even though he had all this power, he still followed law. Just like one of us, it says, and became obedient unto death. 
the death on the cross. So he didn't consider himself above. He didn't say, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm special. You know, my dad is God. Like, yeah, he y'all father too. But like, no, I'm talking about like, he's really my dad though. You understand? He ain't doing none of that stuff that we do. This is why we don't have it right. We got to first humble ourselves and we have to be servants. If you want to be the greatest salesperson, you have to first be the best servant. Think of the best ways. Sometimes that might put you in a red. Sometimes that might make it to where you don't have any profit first. But guess what? That 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 the word of mouth starts going through the four corners of the earth of how much this company cares. They didn't just care about the money. They don't even make a profit up front. Like they just really cared about if I was getting the result that I was asking for. How do we do that, y'all? Okay, so it says, now I need y'all to see. I need y'all to see the result. Ah, yeah, Lee, man. I need y'all to see the result of him coming here, doing what he did, being the greatest servant. I know it's uncomfortable for a time. Remember, I was telling y'all the other day, the scripture says, he that endures to the end shall receive the crown of glory, right? So you might say, yo, I need sales up front. I want to be rich right now. I'm not prepared to go through the fire. Okay. Well, fine. Go after that fast money, man. Don't get the longevity. Go ahead. Go after the fast money. Let me show you how you are rewarded when you're willing to go through the fire. It says, wherefore God also hath exalted, highly exalted him. Now, imagine this is your business or your brand, your company, your product, your invention, whatever. Your asset, right? God highly exalted him. How high? And given him a name which is above every name, which is why no matter what country you go to, even countries that barely have any type of connection to internet or phones or any of that, no matter where you go to in the world, they all know the name Yahweh or Christ. Every last country. They might not follow him, but they all know him. He gave him a name. God gave him a name above every name. Come on, man. I don't care if you Buddhist. I don't care if you atheist. I don't care. Everybody knows him. Even if you're an atheist, what name do you scream out if you get shot or you stub your toe? Jesus. Man, what the hell? Everybody. Tell me it ain't so. Say it ain't so. Everything is right in the scriptures, man. So check this out. It ain't done. It said that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And that's exactly what's going to happen in the end days. But imagine in your industry, in your market, your industry, right? Every, every company, I mean, all even your competitors have to find some way. In order to survive, they got to find some way to, to, you know, to work with you. Like they have to, they have to submit to you, every company. Like imagine that. Imagine you have a monopoly on the customers in your market. Majority of the, all, almost all the sales come to you and they just have to deal with the little crumbs that you allow to pass by. That's what happened with him for being the greatest servant of all time first. Oh my God, man. Oh, my God. It says that every name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Everybody, the demons, everybody, everything you heard of, all of them. When he returns this time and his 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 raiment, his clothes is going to be drenched with the blood of our enemies and stuff. Every knee is going to bow. He left out a lamb but he's going to return the lion of Judah, right? So remember, he left breadcrumbs for us. He left examples for us. That's what the scripture was written for, our learning. 
You're deceiving yourself if you just hear it and don't do it. This is why I do these classes so that we can start doing this stuff, putting it to action. There is no cash in without action. So it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue that means even the devil, even like the, the Pharisees that wanted them dead. That means even the naysayers, the atheists, the everybody. It's going to come a day where every last one of them, everyone, every tongue should confess that Yahweh is Lord to the glory of God, the Father, everyone. How do you do that? where even your enemies, when they're doing commercials and stuff, they got to admit the power of you. They got to say, well, you know, I know y'all guys rather go to McDonald's, but, we, you know, we, you know, the Whopper is good too. <laughs> How do you do that? How do you do that? It's formulas and laws to this, I keep telling you. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the moderation. Okay. Yes, 100. Now, let's get back to it, guys. Man, I told y'all, man. Venus flytrap. He literally became one of us to win us over. Like, what do you do? Okay. If y'all think this is just some made up stuff, ooh, Venus flytrap, Venus flytrap. What, what, what is an informant? What do the FBI use? Don't they use informants to take down big kingpins and like, like closed cases and stuff? They have to send somebody in there that looks or is or was one of them. So it doesn't raise any red flags so they can win over the trust of the people that they can actually take down. And it works almost every time, doesn't it? Because it's laws and formulas to this stuff. That's the Venus flytrap method. By the time the kingpin realizes that it's an, a rat in the mist, case closed. Just like by the time the fly realizes it can't get off that dang old Venus flytrap plant, it closes. Mill. Told y'all. All right, so now we're going to go. So 2 Corinthians. I'll praise to the most high, y'all. Hey, check this out, man. I want y'all to put up some big prayers for my grandmother. She is in the ICU right now. And, you know, you have these urges to not do things. You have these urges to call off. You have these urges to give up or be like, you know, why are you doing this class right now? You're supposed to be doing this. Why are you, you know, you have these urges. But then that's idolatry, right? Right? If God put you on a path, you're supposed to stay the course. But put some big prayers up for my grandma, though. She's in the ICU right now. Um, <laughs> touchy Philly. Uh, you know, a lot of people have lower faith and don't really believe that the most high can do anything. And he can, you know, he got a reason for everything too. So, but put some, put some big prayers up. You know, I pray that she make it through y'all. You understand? Cause let me tell you, it wouldn't be this right here if it wasn't for that lady that's in the hospital. And I'm gonna tell you why. I believe that God put her in my path in order to leave me here because there's no other entrepreneurs that I could like pay attention to in my family. Like my dad was in the Marines and then became a dang on cop. Uh, you know, my mom didn't have consistent work or nothing, but she wasn't no entrepreneur. Even the most successful person in our family, one of my aunts, she's a company woman. So she didn't own a business, none, none, none of them. Like, I never met anybody in my family that actually owns businesses. My grandmother, the one that's in the hospital right now, <laughs> thank you guys. I, I see the prayer emojis. I appreciate y'all, right? Um, 
my grandmother, she's the only one, man, in the family that actually went after entrepreneurship. Coming up, those, I remember when I was running the streets with them thugs. She always was calling me and telling me, hey, hey, little Dave, it's these millionaires in town. You understand? You're going to want to meet them. Some of them are your age. And she'll be trying to get me to join these dang on uh, network marketing companies and uh, prepaid legal and all of that. Like my grandmother, she in a dang on, she was in the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, 50s and 60s and stuff, trying to get me to come to these network marketing events. She paid for our entire family to go to Las Vegas in 2000, uh, like in 2015 so that I can go to one of these network events with her and everything. And that really lit a fire under me to actually start creating the Effa Job company, now known as Anti-Job. You know what I'm saying? Like that trip that she took me on and introduced me to those marketers and stuff, even though I don't like MLMs and stuff, uh, you know, the ones, you know, some of them aren't, aren't scams, right? But even though I just don't like them as a whole, right? Um, I have to attribute attribute the spark from her anyway. Like I wouldn't have been doing none of this. I had jobs. I had, you know, but it was always just my music and these jobs. I just knew I didn't want no job. It was her that when I quit my job, it was it was her. Like it clicked in my head. Like yo, why don't I start some type of business or something? You understand what I'm saying? So. Thanks for the prayers. Y'all, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, right? But yeah, yeah, she's in the hospital right now. And she is the beginning of all of this stuff that y'all, you know, y'all are learning from me and all of that. If it wasn't her introducing to me, uh, this entrepreneur world, I don't know. If God wanted it to, to happen, it would have happened some other way. But um, I'll just say that wasn't in my in my mind back then unless she would call me and invite me to events and stuff and all of that. So, but anyway, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians Chapter 8, verse 9, y'all. I'm waiting on a new camera to come to, y'all. Uh, the mail is kind of slow out here in Panama. So you just got to think of stuff like a lot, like weeks ahead that you want to buy so that you can get it. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Yahushai, or Christ, that though he was rich, because a lot of people think, a lot of people think the disciples and the, uh, the you know, they were poor and broke and all of that. Remember, he told them they had to leave their lives behind in order to follow him. They have businesses, companies, and products and services, fishermen companies, tent companies they were selling, and all of that extra stuff. Like these dudes was not broke. But he said, if you're going to do this full time with me, leave all that stuff behind, you're going to be taken care of. So watch this For ye know the grace of our Lord Yahushai, that though he was rich, yet for, uh, for your sakes, he became poor. So he became a servant. He became powerless and weak, like what the scripture was saying before. Why? That ye through his poverty, that you through his struggle, through his pain, his, his, his you know, uh, uh, lowliness might be won back. You might be forgiven. You might become rich. You might be uh, won back into the kingdom, Right. So he became like us so that he could win us over so that we can be converted back to something that God would allow in the kingdom. He was out here winning souls, y'all. That's what you're supposed to be doing. What we all supposed to be doing, man. Come on, man. Listen. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes, he became poor. 
So when I speak to you guys, my job is to do my best to make it relatable to you. This is why I use a lot of metaphors and similes and stuff. This is why I try to do things step by step and, and try to remember where my head at, uh, her head was at when I first um, started this entrepreneur stuff so I can make it relatable so that I can win you over. That's how I got the people in the boot camp or any of my courses, right? I didn't do it by trying to flash money or or none of that extra stuff. Like you have to become one of them for in order for you to understand them. Like, dude, they send people in the hood to study us all the time so that they can create their commercials to sell to us. They know the formulas. How come we don't get it? How come we don't get it? They will literally say, all right, man, we've been in these rich mansions for generations. Why don't you hire someone, you know, one of them, someone that looks like them, right? Uh, give them some rags to riches backstory. Uh, give them some hood clothing that fits loosely on them and have them go to the local clubs and just kind of listen and gather information about the culture and all of that stuff. And then they take it back to them and they come out with all these products and services and shows and movies and stuff to sell to us. And it works like a charm. They know the formula is right there for us. If we stop thinking this is just some spiritual book ooh, ha, ha, or something, we will get the formulas and we'll be able to progress and start profiting and start being prosperous. OK, this is for us. He left it behind for us. So check this out. Now, see, they want you to believe. Your pastors, the government and the devil want you to believe that this is just a spiritual book. So when you talk anything about money, they say you're envious, you're covetous, you're sinful, you're lustful. All you want is this. When it talks about prosperity, it's talking about your salvation and all of that stuff. Yes, it is talking about your soul prospering. It is. But it's also talking about your health as well. And it's also talking about your wealth as well. Why do you think in Isaiah it talks about how we'll, uh, we won't even have to build the houses anymore, but we will live in them. We'll be able to dwell in them and eat the grapes from the vines thereof like a king. So if it's just talking about your spirit or when heaven comes, why would it mention things like that? Why would he mention every time he describes, uh, um, every time he describes a faithful servant, he also mentions their gold and their silver, Job, uh, Abraham, Solomon, David. He always mentions their assets. Why? If, if, if all that matters is your spirit, why does he have to mention that they own uh, flocks of sheep and lamb and goats and, and tents and, and, and all of this extra stuff? Why? Because that's part of your prospering as well. Because nobody listens to a broke wise man. That's in the scriptures as well. Right? So don't let people fool y'all. So we're going to go to Mark now. Go to Mark chapter 10. Mm. This is Mark chapter 10 uh, verse hold on. Let's get it. Let's get it. Young Jeezy boys. Okay. Okay. Mark chapter 10, verse 43. Mark chapter 10, verse 43. It says, but so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. I know, y'all. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. When we go to church, we're taught that the minister is the dude up there ruling the church, 
We bow down to him. We fill up his collection plate. He sleep with all of our wives and we still have to get hell. I know that's what you've been taught, but that's not the truth. Let me tell you what a minister really is. Watch this. We're going to start at 43. It says, but so shall it not be among you as far as you larding over each other. It says, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. So whosoever, whosoever shall be the most powerful of you shall be your servant, which is why, see, the Bible don't lie. That's why Christ came here and was lowly and was a servant. He was greater than everybody. So he became the greatest servant. Watch this. If you want proof that the word minister means servant, so you can go back to your pastors and ask them why they're acting all uppity around you. Watch, look at, look at verse 44. It says, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest. We all know what the chief is of the, of the dang on tribe, right? You know what the chief is, son? Who is the chief of the tribe? If I say I want to talk to the chief of the tribe, who is that? The ruler. It ain't that hard, right? It says, and whosoever you are the ruler shall be servants of all, just like the cops are supposed to serve and protect. Oh, snap. Ain't that a dang on kawinky dink? No, it's a formula. It says, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servants of all. For even the son of man came not to be ministered unto. That's how you know what the word uh, minister means. He didn't come here to be this uh, served uh, himself but to serve, but to minister and to give his life as ransom for many. Man, come on, man. Come on. I do. So this right here is showing you how to use the Venus flytrap method to become the greatest salesperson in your company, for your business, your product, your brand, your service, whatever. You need to be the greatest servant if you want to be the greatest salesperson. You can't always think about the actual sale itself. Christ didn't have to think about the reward because he already knew he was going to get the reward. So if you know, see, this is where your faith comes in, guys. If you know that you're the best, if you're serving your market, better than any company. Don't worry about the first up front. You need to know, you need to have faith that, yo, eventually this person gonna come back and buy something from me because they had such an awesome experience. I served them to the best of my ability that I know is no other company that went as far as we went. Why do you think my boot camp is from eight in the morning Come on, man. You ain't did this in school. From 8 in the morning to 3 p.m. in the afternoon, I spend that much time with my students because I understand that I have to be a servant in order to impact their lives and really get them some great results. I have to be the great, a great servant first. I can't just be like, yo, you know, I'm the, I'm the coach. I'm the business dude. I'm the guru because, you know, look, I gave you the course. Figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I got better things to do with my time than to be hanging with y'all. <laughs> but that's how most people are handling business. It says, for even the son of man, letting you know, dog, if he can become a servant, who are you? Are you telling me you're better than Christ himself? No, you're not. And you know you're not. Bars. Okay? For even the Son of Man came not to be served to, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Man, dude. Like, listen, if this ain't becoming clear, I don't know what is. We can use all these sale tactics. 
We can use sales tips and tip tricks and all of that extra stuff, but nothing beats just good old fashioned, dude, this place is I go to to eat where the customer service sucks, right? But they still be wanting to dang on tip. You crazy as a mug, right? But then it's places you go to where they just serving the mess out of you. They just waiting for you to get done drinking your water and then they fill the water back up. It's a hotel down the street from us where when we went, we went there to eat and stuff, like they just kept coming back around every time we'd drink the water down a little bit. They'd, they'd top it back off again. And like, dude, they just was on point and just was making sure they weren't, they didn't even ask for a tip or, or not, weren't looking for none of that. And it just made you want to give them your money. That's what you're supposed to do with people. You're supposed to serve them so greatly that not you forcing them to give the money, themselves will be like, look, I got it. I got to You know, I've had some service so good, pause, that I'm like, yo, they like, nah, you don't owe me nothing. I'm like, please. And I overpay them. How do you get that effect with your brand, business, company, service offer? I'm showing you today. The scriptures are showing you today. For even the son of man came not to be ministered unto. So just because you got the LLC, you got your business cards, you got your uniform, your little company hat and all of that. No, you aren't, you aren't in the position where you need to be served, where you king or something like that. You need to remember what a king is. A king is supposed to serve his kingdom. I know we're, we're, we're taught about peasants. We're taught about all of this Game of Thrones crap and all of these, uh, you know, these Edomite rulers that weren't really doing it the right way, which is why all the kings fail, which is why all the kings fail, right? Okay. <laughs> a king is supposed to be a great servant. You understand? Okay. So even the son of man came not to be served too, but to serve. Are you more powerful, more more righteous, more blameless, more spotless than the son of man? Your house, huh? If not, then gird your loins, suck it up, stop being a chump or a chumpess, and become a great servant with your product, gift, or whatever. What you need to do is write down all the ways you can help. Not all, I know we are taught in this generation funnels and all of this, how, how many upsells can I do? Okay, I'm not saying you can't have upsells, but sometimes we just upsell stuff that ain't related. Some We upsell stuff that don't mean nothing, that ain't gonna help them or nothing. Write down all the ways, all the ways, listen to me, A-L-L, the ways that you can serve them and help them with your product or gift or whatever it is or your offer even if it means putting you in a red. Yes, I said it. Even if it means putting you in a red, because if you want to accomplish that name that is exalted above all names, like Yahweh did, that is the formula. He gave everything without re receiving anything in return. But then his reward comes back around and it's hundredfold. How do you make it to where you create customers that buy everything you come out with? Not just the little, the little, see this, you know, sales tips and tricks and stuff might get people to buy that product, but how do you get them obsessed with the brand or the business, the company, the where they buy everything. They don't even have to see an ad. They don't even have to see a commercial or testimonial. When they come on your website, they say, hey, what's that? I didn't know that you'd release that. And, he, and they just go buy it without any advertisement, any previews or testing or nothing. How do you get that? How do you get a name exalted above all names in your industry? Where a person can come out with a deal or they can come out with a new you know, a uh, product or whatever, but your people are so loyal. They're like, I don't care what them people trying to sell me. I, I want to do business with these people right here. You got to have a name for that. You can't build a name like that without being a servant. This is something I'm working on. I'm like, yo, that's why I tell my students in the boot camp when they, you know, I can tell that they're used to not being able to give good suggestions to people uh, that sell them stuff because every time they get ready to make a suggestion to me, 
they have to prep me first. <laughs> They'd be like, um, you know, uh, I don't want to, you know, tell you how to run stuff, you know, but I, you know, I have some ideas, you know, if you don't mind. I'm, I'm like, dude, tell me. <laughs> dude, how do I, be, how can I become the best at what I do if I am not humble enough to be willing to listen to feedback to the people that I'm trying to sell to? So if you tell me there's a way I can make something better, please tell me. See, people got the wrong mindset. Shut up. You're not in my position. You can't give me advice. Well, let them dummies fall. I don't want to fall. I don't want to go back to poverty. If it's something you can tell me that can help me make uh, what I'm serving you with better, I'm all ears like Martin Lawrence or Dumbo. Okay, like, listen, you got to be like that. You got to be have, you got to become a great servant. It's going to take time. Do y'all think I, tomorrow I got to be on there at 8 a.m. And I got to stay on there with them to 3 p.m. Why do y'all think a lot of our live streams, you know, we usually live stream every, every day on the YouTube channel, but I'll be tired now, y'all. Cause I'm in the boot camp trying to make sure that they get their monetized assets out in these eight weeks and we get some good results. That's taking time, energy, effort, money, interviewing people that I don't know. And I'm not really, the, and yeah, it sounds like I'm an extrovert, but if you ask anybody else, you when you really see me with anybody for real. So I'm doing all of this, not for a pat on the back, but because I want them to get the greatest results because I know where my reward comes from. When I'm a great servant, God rewards me. I'm blessed beyond measure when I'm a great servant helping people. But when I start thinking about their money, when I start thinking about what y'all can give me, that's when things go bad for me. I... <sighs> he said, uh, all there is like Martin Lawrence, you're a fool for that. <laughs> hey, I need y'all to play these scriptures over and over in y'all head, man. For real. Like, we got to lower ourselves. This is why the world is out of order right now, because everybody all high and mighty. Social media was created for us to bump up our own egos with stupid likes and, and all of this extra stuff. Even me, when we get on here, it's just an automatic, it's like automaticity. You just tell people to like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, yo, you program. When you get out of one matrix, you're in another matrix. You try to get out of that matrix. You understand? This stuff does not mean anything, guys. You need to serve your people with the gift that God gave you to give. A gift is something you give other people, not yourself. Your passion, you can keep your passion for you unless it lines up with your gift and then, then you're really blessed. But if not, keep your passion for your dang on self. I love to ride motorcycles. Fine, cool. That's your passion. That ain't helping nobody though. All right? Your gift is something that is supposed to be served to somebody else. I have a gift of marketing, advertising, teaching these type of things. I'm supposed to give it to everybody to the best of my abilities, to the, the best way I can. I'm supposed to rule my domain with these things. I'm supposed to be the king of serving with my gift. You understand? And so are you. And when we learn to do that, that's when we will be rewarded by the one that can reward us way more than the people that sit by the buy now button. He will send a flood of people to your buy now button. He will give you way better than that. He will take you to different countries, uproot your family from, from ghettos and dangerous places and put you in places where you can actually hear the birds and see the stars for once without the pollution in the air. He will do that type of stuff. I want that reward from him. So, if I got to go through y'all, then I will. If I got to be the greatest servant and serve y'all with my gift and be the best servant I can possibly be, sometimes meaning I'm not going to get paid for it, then fine. Because I don't need y'all pay. I need him to reward me. So 
So that's how you get a name that is exalted above other names. I'm trying to follow that formula right now. You got to humble yourself. Sit down. Be humble. Sit down. All right. Now you want to go to Luke. Luke chapter 22. The mama super thick. She say she 22. She see them 22s. We in Luke 222. Now, we in Luke chapter 22, verse 26. Okay, yeah. Verse 26. All righty. So this one, I'll give you a couple examples too in the scriptures, which is why when they tell you that Jacob tricked Esau from his birthright, don't listen to them. Them the, Don't listen to people that, okay, I'm, I'm trying to keep everything good. Listen, some people are bitter in the world, right? But don't listen to that. He did not trick him. If you go back and read the scripture, he literally told him, hey, if you want this, then give me your birthright. And Esau was like, yo, what I'm gonna do with that when I'm starving to death anyway? And he gave him the birthright in exchange for the food. Don't be mad later on when you find out that giving away your birthright means you gotta serve him. But it would have happened anyway because it's an election and that's proof right here. Check this out. The scripture says, but ye shall not be so, meaning if you read, okay, we'll read the one above that, 25. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles, uh, the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. Okay, so the kings of the Gentiles, the ones that don't follow Christ, exercise, exercise lordship, rulership over them. And that they, uh, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. Watch this. But you shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that do serve. So Esau was going to have to serve Jacob anyway, which is the same reason why Cain was mad at Abel as well. Jealousy. Like, hold on, I'm the powerful one. I'm the first, I'm the oldest. Why well, I got to serve the younger? It's always been like that. So you are the owner, the CEO. See, it, it's breaking down this business. Like, like how all this crap is right now. You go on these Instagram pages and the CEO is unrelatable and just like not one of you anymore. That's not how it's supposed to be. It says, he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief as he that do serve. Okay, man, see? <clears throat> so as for whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat or he that is that serveth. So if you're at a dinner table and it's place for kings, you understand that you got the maids walking around. What the scripture is saying is maybe you should have the maids sit down and you give them something to eat for once. So you can see how I feel. And guess what? That builds a type of bond with you, with, with you and them. Because now they know that you'll be able to deal with them with a little bit of empathy. So let me say that again, for whether it's greater, doesn't matter who is the greater, the most powerful one or the richer one, it says he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. Oh, come on, man. Basically, he's saying, even though I'm the king sitting at the table, at the edge of the table and stuff, don't you see me getting up fixing people play too? Wow. 
Wow. We ain't taught that. All we taught in business is biz. All we taught is AI and automations and funnels and sales tips and tricks and stuff. Look, if you took away all of that stuff because you're how shy, Christ didn't have none of that. He ain't had no, he didn't even have a website. He ain't had no internet connection. He ain't had none of that. If you took away all of that, he'll still be a better salesperson than any of us because he was a greater servant than anybody. Came here to serve complete strangers and die for them. Yo, we think we doing somebody a favor if we give them a discount. <laughs> it shows you the difference, don't it? Right? Come on, man. All right, so now we're going to go to Hebrews. That I am. Hebrews. Mm. Hebrews. Let's make it move, y'all. Let's make it move. Okay. DeWine said, I want to be the best servant out here. All praises to the most high. That's, that's what's going to get us the reward, y'all. We got to stop thinking about what people can do for us and remember what he can do for us. Remember, the reason we're in a position we're in right now, in Romans, it says that we worship the creature more than the creator. Our creator told us to serve his, serve and feed his flock. He's going to be the one that gives the payments. He will decide if a person comes to your site and says, I want to work with this person. He will harden the hearts of the kings and the people. There's nothing you can do but serve. If you want access to kingdom benefits and privileges, then you need to be a servant. A great one. Watch this, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse one. Yeah, let's, let's fill up the chat with some hashtag, yes, lords. Fill up that chat with the hashtag, yes, lords for me. I ain't even asked that this whole time, man. I ain't even asked that this whole time, man. I mean, I, I feel like I'm in the spirit right now. Right now I'm eating some uh, olives, y'all, because they're low carb. It's the Sabbath day. Can't cook nothing either. You got to prep that the night before. Mm. Yes, Lord. Now watch this. This is Venus flytrap in totality. This is your house shine showing you how to be the greatest salesperson for your product, business, service, offer, whatever it is, in totality. Listen, please look with your with, with your, your inner eye. Matter of fact, don't look with your eye. Look with your spirit and get this and then apply it to your, your, your business. Watch this. Watch. Come on, man. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1 says, let brotherly love continue. Oh, man, that had to strike a nerve right there. Which one of y'all brothers in here could give me a hug without feeling feminine or feeling uh, homosexual? Which one of y'all could? See, we've been taught differently from the scripture. We've been taught that that's weird, that's soft, all of that. So, but, but we've been taught that it's cool to kill each other. What did the scripture just say? Let brotherly love continue. Watch this. Watch this. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Oh, snap. This is why you're supposed to treat everybody the way you want to be treated. You're not supposed to have respect of persons. You can't say, oh, David owns this business, so I'm going to be nicer to him than this dude that's riding the bus with me. 
You can't say this Edomite or this CEO own that business and I want an internship with them. So I'm going to be on my best behavior there, but I'm going to be a demon at home with my parents. You can't be like that because you don't know who you're entertaining. It says, be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Anybody you come across with, you need to, if possible, live peaceably with all men, like the scripture says. Why? Because any one of them could be an angel. Any one of them might be an angel reporting back on you. You don't want a bad report card. Not this time. So let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Now pay attention to this next part. And it's going to put a bow on the, the Mercedes. It's going to put a cherry on top of the wedding cake. Remember them that are in bonds. Oh, godly. Just that part right there. Remember them that are in bonds. So when I'm creating a product or service or I have a company or something like that, Remember them that are in bonds. In this case, that can be your nine to five job. I need to remember what it was like to have a nine to five job. If I remember what it was like to have a nine to five job, that means I need to create some type of done for you service too, because maybe they don't have a lot of time. For example, I got a brother in a boot camp. He's an over the road truck driver. He came to me and said, look, how much would this cost for you to do this for me? Because when I get off of the boot camp, I'll be like tired and then I'm driving and then this and that. So you need to remember them that are in bonds. What if they're in a position where they can't afford it? Do you have any other thing that they can uh, try to progress with? We have books and uh, cheaper courses and all of that stuff, right? So remember them that are in bonds as bound with them. Remember, it was a point where you weren't where you are today. You weren't this guru, this CEO. You weren't this person that made a lot of money. You weren't this person that had all these connections. Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them. Watch this. And them which suffer adversity. That's those struggles and those hardships and poverties. You've got to remember that as being yourselves also in the body. Like you right along right there with them. When you think of that, if you have that mindset when you're creating your offers and your services and your products and, and building your business and stuff, then you'll always have something to help everybody. You'll always have something to help every... Remember, at the beginning of this, He said he wanted to gain the more, the masses. So he became like them so that he can, he, he became like the majority so that he can gain the masses. The majority of people are not the 1%. So you have to appeal to the masses if you want to sell to the masses. I go to church with y'all. I spend a lot of time with y'all. You see what you see it's formulas to this. If you want to be able to sell to the masses, you have to be like the masses. You have to be relatable to the masses. And they have to feel that. They have to feel it. You can't just say, yo, yo. <laughs> you see a lot of these gurus that be going on these interviews and these shows and be like, yeah, man. You know, I didn't have anything. You know, I didn't have anything. I started with nothing, man. All I had was $50,000 in my account and my mother's credit card. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> reverse back, cuz. Reverse back. This dude said he didn't have nothing. But then he said all I had was $50,000. <laughs> Do you know what I could have did back in the day with $50,000? Or my mother's credit card. My mama ain't even have a credit card. My mama messed my credit up because she ain't have no credit. Like, you understand what I'm talking about? Listen. It says, remember them that are in bonds. 
Like they're still in there, even if you got out of it. So you have to time travel to a point in your mind that you were still in those bonds like them. Then you can be able to come with the, like, oh, oh they're going to say this. I know what the objection is going to be. I know what their fear is going to be because I've been there. I'm there with them right now. And then that'll put you in a position where you'll be able to create some type of offer that's convenient enough for them to be helped or served in some way. Even if it ain't your main offer, even if it's not your main course or your main product. If you listen to what they're going through, if you can be in that mind, you can say, look, hmm, hold on. I know exactly. I got something. I got something that can help you is uh, is way more affordable than this, but is definitely it's still going to help you at least get you to the point to where you're comfortable enough to uh, come back and do this. You got to be able to help the masses. We talked about high ticket a couple of weeks ago and how attractive high ticket is, but that's not the masses. Yes, it makes sense. And that would be awesome if all of our sales could be high ticket, but that's just not reasonable if you want the masses. Now, if you're cool just getting a little percentage and helping, that's when you know people are selfish. If all they have is high ticket and that's it, that's when you know they're selfish. And they don't, they're not really trying to help or serve people because most people aren't the 1%. It wouldn't be called the 1% if most people were them, would it? It'd be a bigger percentage, wouldn't it? He said he wants to gain the more. We're supposed to be Christ-like, right? So we need to gain the more. I have high ticket stuff. I got something that's uh, $100,000. But if you go to my site, I also have a free option to work with me. I also have other little programs. Some programs are 50, some pro programs are a thousand, some programs depend on what you need, but you wanna be able to help and serve the masses. That's how you become the best salesman or salesperson, I'm sorry, of all time. You have to become the greatest servant of all time in your industry, your niche. Write it down. Who do you think is your competition? Go to their pages, not to funnel hack. Not to funnel hack or do none of this woo-ha stuff. Figure out are they, how are they not serving the market? Are they serving the market or are they mainly more concerned with serving themselves? Write down all the ways you can serve the market, even if you're not going to get a dime from it. You're going to make money, I, I promise you. But don't have that in your mind when you're creating your irresistible offer. I talk to my students all the time about the irresistible offer, and they be looking like, how the heck are we going to be able to pull that off? Don't think about that right now. Think about what, what feelings, what how... How will they think? How will they feel about you? What will they think about you? And what will they say about you? How will they feel about you? What will they think about you? And what will they say about you after they press the buy now button? Think about that. Because if you create an offer that they just got to go and tell everybody, you don't have to worry about if you were profitable up front and all of that. Because when they go tell everybody, that's free advertisement. That's what Yahweh Shah did. He offered the kingdom to these people. And then he, he trained his affiliates, aka disciples, to go and offer the kingdom to more people. And then they became disciples. And then they offered the kingdom to more people. Generation to generation to generation to generation to generation of perfect salespeople. By being servants first. I mean, come on. The prophets. that like, dude, when people, yo, they wash their feet. They wash their feet. What do? What dudes you know around here gonna wash each other's feet? Like how who, who gonna be lowly enough to do that? Humble enough to do that? Especially when they got money. 
I'm like, yeah, cause I'm, 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 you know, I don't do no stuff like that. I ain't finna like, I ain't watch nobody feed. I ain't finna shine nobody's shoes. Like, you know, <laughs> he was the greatest servant in order to be the greatest salesperson. He won so many souls, souls. When he was here, I need y'all to understand. Come on, man, watch this. <sighs> You think it's so great when you see these companies make a billion dollars or something like that. That's cool, right? But this man, Yahushai, came in the flesh, right? He didn't start his ministry till he was 30 years old. And then three years later, he died. So for only three years of sales, come on, I need y'all to get this. Name one of these gurus that y'all follow, any of them. Only three years of sales. 4,000 years later, almost 4,000 years later, we're still talking about it right now. We're still being sold into the Bible every day. Every year, the book is still the greatest selling book off the shelves. How, how do you do that in a three-year period of sales? So if you're going to study somebody's sales tips, tricks, and tactics, and strategies, and all of that, we going wrong studying any of these dudes on YouTube. Don't follow me. Follow the Bible. You're not studying me. The Venus flytrap method is literally this, straight from the book. We just gave it a pretty name, clickbaity name, or something, if you want to call it that. The Venus flytrap method, right? But it's straight from, from Christ. You seen it. I just went through the scriptures. Come on, man. Unless you are the Antichrist, you got to go ahead and bow down and tell me this man is a he's he's king of all kings, man. That's why when y'all tell me, recommend books to y'all and stuff, I'll give you the occasional irresistible offer book, authority book, laptop millionaire book, um, uh, known, I love that book, uh, uh, platform, you know, monopolies and all that. There's a whole bunch of books, clockwork, but there's no book like this because you can't worship the creature more than you, you know what I'm saying? Worship the creator. Yeah, Shai was right there with God when he was creating everything. Who can have more wisdom than that type of man? Who can have more wisdom than a man that in three years created an, a ripple effect, a ripple effect that's still, that's still causing, uh, you know, 9.8 uh, earth, uh, you know, size earthquakes on a Richter scale all these years. Years later, you understand what I'm saying? Like, dude, who can sell like that? Imagine having Christ in your business, in your company. Come on, man. I'm, I'm, listen, I feel sorry for anybody that think that this is just the book. After hearing these scriptures, if you don't try to go and implement some of, some of Christ or any of these, I will go back to all of these classes, these live classes on this channel. Because this is what we do over here. Biblical business principles. You understand that you can actionably apply in your, in your businesses. There is no cash in without action. Remember that. So you take these. Remember, he said, be ye not hearers only of the word, but doers. Okay. Be doers. When you hear these laws, do them. That's how you change your life, convert your business and all of that extra stuff when things start looking better and stuff. So I'm, I'm learning from this too, y'all. I'm a brother. I'm not lording over nobody. I'm not a pastor. I'm not none of that. We heard today what the name, what, what minister means. Minister is a servant. But that's not what we're taught in the Christianity church. We think that ministers and pastors, they're supposed to be praised and worshiped. 
Your minister and your pastor is supposed to be a servant to you, just like the police is. But everything is flipped around in this world. So if you want to be the best company that provides whatever you provide in your market, you need to be the best servant in your market. I hope everybody learned something from this today. I know I did. I'm learning as I go too, y'all. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm right here with y'all. Um, Curtis Ball said, the Bible is not a book of religion. Go ahead and second that, everybody. Hit a like on that one. Yes, Lord. Not like for me. I'm talking about like for him. Okay. <laughs> that is the truth. It is no such thing as a religion in the scriptures. There's no such thing as a Christianity, Catholicism, Buddhism, any of that stuff, Hinduism, none of that stuff is in the scripture. He said there should be no divisions among you. Everybody's supposed to grab this Bible and follow the laws from Old Testament all the way to Revelations. That's your heritage. It is not a religion. That's just what you're supposed to do. It's an instructional manual for navigating through all of these captivities, making it to the kingdom and bringing heaven on earth, like it says in a prayer. That's what the scripture is. But until then, you're still supposed to be prosperous down here. So we don't know all that stuff. Yes, Curtis says, minister equals servant. Go and tell your pastor that, man. <laughs> go flip that church upside down. Go, go tell your pastor, yo. <laughs> Uh, you know, that's just, that's almost as dangerous as going to the cops and telling them you're supposed to serve and protect me. You're like, get on the ground, get, get, get your on the ground. <laughs> your pastor gonna put you out of the church. That brother, um, he had the devil on him, so we had to get. <laughs> you tell him he's supposed to serve you. Hey, he ain't gonna be able to afford his perms or his Cadillac no more. Right? Okay, so. Yo, man, I love y'all, man. I appreciate y'all, you know, uh, coming on the Sabbath and stuff. You know, I know you could be resting, you know, uh, getting your edification some other way or whatever. Make sure y'all keep the Sabbath holy, man. Uh, no buying. Don't even buy nothing from me until the sun go down. Then you can buy something from me, right? <laughs> but don't buy nothing from me. Don't buy nothing from nobody. Don't cook. Don't kindle the fire. Don't go after your own pleasures. You're supposed to be learning about yourself, learning about your heritage, uh, getting your mind clear and ready for a reboot to go back into the wor uh, world and conquer it uh, during a week. He did all his work creating the universe and the world on the, on the on, you know, six days. And then on the Sabbath day, he rested. Are we above him? No. So today you're supposed to be resting too. All right. So cancel whatever you was about to do unless you got to go to the hospital. All right. I right, love y'all, man. Lord will, I see y'all on the next one.